my family affair. Let me introduce you to Gabriel Elias Abushadash, my dad. I like to call him Gabby. Gabby grew up his entire life in Beirut, Lebanon. You could call it, that was the true melting pot. For centuries and centuries, from east to west to north to south, all these different races and ethnicities and genders and languages and recipes all came within Lebanon. And Gabby reminded me often growing up in Beirut that everybody in the family was in business. And some of those businesses, or all those businesses, came from the community. And there were charities, and there were for-profit corporations. And they served the same community generation after generation after generation. And owners, founders, customers, beneficiaries, students, what have you. Let me share with you one of those businesses, real estate. Gabby's family made homes. They made office buildings. They made retail shops. And they did it together for a long time with the same people. You could call it everybody was family who worked together. But that wasn't enough. And two of Gabby's uncles went to Brooklyn. And they started in Lebanon back then, in, you know, 70 years ago. We had weather, which meant we had tourism. We had agriculture. And we had finance. But we didn't make anything. And when you don't make anything, you have to bring things in from somewhere else. So they went to Brooklyn, and they started teaming up with a lot of the brands that you buy at home today. Food and beverage, apparel, household paper, goods for the house. And they started an import-export business where they were the agent for these US or European companies in Lebanon and in the Middle East. Call it diversification. And those profits from that second business were able to be reinvested in their real estate business in Lebanon. They managed risks. And one of the biggest risks, why did you have to go out to many brands, is on a relationship level, these brands could leave you at any time and choose another agent, another distributor in the Middle East. Let me fast forward to 1975. Gabby has a one-year-old son. That's me. And, you know, things are starting to get really bad in Lebanon. And the next six years, or we heard a roller coaster a couple minutes ago. 1981, Gabby didn't have time to think, to think about plans A or Z. He had to move. He grabbed his family of four, he took a couple suitcases. He left to JFK in New York City. What happened? He left his family, his community, his languages, his family business, and had to start all over, finding a home, a school, a job that didn't look anything like the old family business. And people tell you, hey, who do you know? You knew no one, you knew one person. So what did that mean? He had to go and meet people. 47 years later, Gabby has not stopped etching in me values and goals and perse uh, you know, perseverance and creativity. And those tenets remind me of two other women let me start off by Lisai Makwaya, Questrom Business MBA graduate, 2020. Grew up in Tanzania. And one of her friends and co-founders, Françoise Cateño, biological sciences, public health, undergrad, class of 2020. They were, had an idea, you know, in terms of going to Tanzania. 80% of the population is in some way affected or dependent on agriculture. 
That said, 40% of food is wasted or lost each year. So what did Sae and Francoise do about it? They went down the street to the build lab. They entered the summer accelerator. We were paired together. I take a step back. Was that fate? You know, we all grew up in different countries. We spoke at different languages. I've worked a little bit in food and beverage and in nutrition. We like to build things from scratch and get them out there hopefully for a long time. But within their farm to fork model, they joined the build lab. They went out there and talked to farmers within a couple miles of Dar es Salaam, Sa'i's hometown. They started to figure out what their product bundle was. Two crops, not 20, not 200. And they chose a launch date almost a year ago today. They stuck to it. But along the way, they had to manage trade-offs and opportunities and challenges. And they also took two full-time jobs. They kept on meeting advisors. They built out their team a little further. And if you look back, and I don't know the answer, but what were the implications of those actions? Did they lose any credibility because they were not full-time? And if so, from whom? Their next team member, their existing farmer, or millennial and Gen Z customers, middle to upper class in the big city? Did growth maybe slow down a little bit, but just a little bit at that? Now, let me take those values and goals and bring you back to my family, but with a twist, a small twist at that. My wife reminds me often that her family from Europe came over many hundred years before Gabby first landed at JFK. And one of those members of her family, John Wanamaker, was born in 1838 in rural outskirts of Philadelphia to a brickmaster. John's first jobs, stock boy, errand boy. His mom wanted him to be a preacher. Do well and do good. But John, like many of you, journaled. And he was writing down architect, doctor, priest, but maybe merchant. And back then, guess what? Business did not want to focus on equity and religion. But John thought, said that business would allow him to maximize doing well and doing good. And he launched the first, for the shoppers in this room, the first Omni brand store in America. His first day of sales, $24.95 back in the 1800s. And he also managed through risks and opportunities and challenges and adversity through the Civil War, through incumbents who didn't want things to be more equitable for one's community. And as John continued to serve the same community over and over again, the community also included a national level where he became the postmaster general. And let's take those same goals and values and what have you. And many, gen almost 100 years later, his great, 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 grandson is with us today. And he would be proud as his great-great-great-grandson is still serving his local and national communities, whether it's food insecurity on one side or the unbanked or the underbanked. Now, we're at BU. I gotta bring you back to our BU family and a couple of other members of the family. Some of my colleagues in the strategy and innovation department 25 years ago, I was in your shoes, and some of my friends went to BU, and they came from family businesses. The definition hasn't changed then or now, but it's so important to focus on the definition. Accessibility, what does, does that mean? First generation American, first generation student, combine them both. 
bodega or convenience store to my left, conglomerate to my right, multicultural across all of our schools. And as a team in strategy and innovation, along with colleagues in other schools at BU and many of you in this room, we knew that we needed to bring out a family business course at BU Cross School, accessible again. The class just took off this semester, and it's hard to believe we're three weeks from, from ending. But that course was designed for the same Gabbies and Saïs and Françoises who had the same values and passions and goals and what have you that we're continuing to perpetuate together. Thank you today for allowing me to share some individual members of my family and those values and goals and targets that they've stuck to as they've continued to do good and to do well while managing trade-offs and risks and opportunities and challenges. As you take some of these tenets, and maybe as that might help you at home, next time you're in the classroom, or your next job. And if I can leave you with one thing, please. As you never stop embracing that immigrant sitting next to you, who you might see again in your next class, in your next job, or your next neighborhood, as you all together continue to shape your own family affair. Thank you.